Hello, and welcome to today's video. Today, I'm going to give you seven steps to make healing obvious. Now, I don't know if you're at the beginning of your healing journey, or if you're a seasoned veteran like myself, but I can tell you the healing process takes time. And throughout this process, you are gonna go through periods of time where even though you're doing everything you can think of, you think you're doing everything right, and you're just getting no evidence that you actually are healing. You're gonna be trying one thing, you're gonna be trying another thing. It's gonna feel like you're pushing a boulder up a hill and you're gonna have very little to no results to show for it. But when this happens, I have seven things that you can lean on, that you can rely on, that even if you aren't seeing any observable results, you know if you just do these things, healing will come, relief will come, symptoms will find resolution because these are the basics. And I truly believe if you get the basics right, that is 80% of your healing. I'm sharing this with you today whilst I'm actually in one of these dips. You know, my health is struggling. I don't feel that good. My stomach hurts, I have some shoulder pains, I'm a bit depersonalized, I feel a bit all over the place. I don't feel like myself, but this is part of the healing process. And when this is happening, you double down on the things that you know you need to do to heal. So whether you're having a good day and you feel great, or if you're feeling a bit off and you're not feeling so great, like, like I am today, these points I'm gonna share with you today are the things that you need to focus on to guarantee improvements in your healing situation. So the first point is to eat high quality, low toxin, blood sugar friendly foods. Now you might think this is a little bit broad and in some ways it is because there is no one perfect diet to heal. Everybody has their own path to healing and consequently everyone has their own healing diet. However, there are a couple of things that all healing diets have in common. The first is that they are nutrient dense. This means that you are getting a very high number of nutrients, a very high quantity of nutrients in a relatively small portion. What this practically looks like is eating generally less processed foods. So when we process foods, we often take many of the nutrients out. For example, this is processed carbohydrates, like bread, like pasta. This could be junk foods, like anything with refined sugar in. These foods are depleted of nutrients and are therefore not nutrient dense. This could look like eating fresh vegetables. This could look like eating meat and animal products, dairy, eggs. Generally speaking, as long as it's a whole food, it's pretty much okay. You're gonna, you're gonna do okay on it. Now, there is some more nuance to this. Some foods are better than others. If you look at 100 grams of spinach versus 100 grams of beef liver, you're gonna see that there is a significant difference. We also want to prioritize low toxin foods. So this means going organic and grass-fed where you can. There's a really cool graphic that you might have seen called the Clean 15 and the Dirty Dozen. So these are 15 vegetables that are safer to consume if they're not organic and 12 other vegetables that are absolutely essential that you eat organic because they have an extremely high content of pesticides. We also want to be eating in a way that supports your blood sugars. Then this is going to look different for everybody, but blood sugar imbalances are one of the biggest causes of physiological stress in the human body. So making sure that we're eating in a way that supports blood sugar regulation is essential. The second point is optimizing and improving gut health. This is a whole can of worms that I don't exactly want to open today. I have a lot of other gut health content on the channel and you're going to see over the next few months, there's going to be even more. But generally speaking, what are we talking about here? Improving and optimizing your gut health looks like optimizing the function of the five pillars. So these are the five primary digestive mechanisms that we have being stomach acid, digestive enzymes, bile, motility, and mucosa. We want to be eating in a way that supports these, supplementing and including lifestyle approaches that support these functions whilst we simultaneously work on improving the microbiome. The key to a healthy microbiome is diversity. The more diversity we have, the healthier the microbiome. And if we can support the five pillars of digestive function and the microbiome, you've got a really good foundational recipe for good digestive health. Gut health is so important because it's connected to everything. If you do not have good gut health, it's gonna significantly affect your mood. It's gonna affect your productivity and your motivation. It's gonna affect your ability to think. It's gonna affect your ability to absorb nutrients from your food. 
most of your immune system is in your digestive system. So if your gut isn't working, your whole body is gonna fail. This is why it is one of these core principles of obviously healing. The third is a commitment to high quality restorative sleep. If you're not sleeping, you're not healing. It's plain and simple. It's as good an equation as you'll ever get in the healing process. Bad sleep equals bad healing. Good sleep equals good healing. A commitment to consistent high quality sleep especially in the modern age, can be challenging. Late nights out, alcohol or other substances that can disrupt your sleep, artificial light, even just having a family. You know, I, I, I live with my wife and that affects my bedtime. But if you have kids or if you live with grandparents or parents, this throws a spanner in the mix. But if you want to heal, you have to prioritize restorative high quality sleep every single night. My best tips for this are to improve your sleep environment. So make sure you've got a cool, dark room. I use earplugs, I use a mask. I make it as optimal as I can. I also sleep grounded every night. So I have a grounding earthing cable. We have another video about that somewhere else on the channel. You can go and take a look at that. And also my aura ring has been extremely helpful. This little ring that I have on my finger here. This tracks my sleep stages. It tracks my total sleep time. It tracks my recovery index. It's really, really cool. It's a really nice little biohacking tool that has been really helpful. I'll throw up a little bit of data here so you can see how my sleep has changed over the last couple of months and how I've used this data to improve my sleep to make it more consistently high quality and restorative. The fourth point is aligning ourselves with nature. This point might sound a bit vague, but this encompasses things like sun exposure, like grounding, like community, like balancing our circadian rhythms. I think that as we're humans and we live in houses and we, we look at what we've done to the world, we think that we're sort of a separate species, but at the end of it, we are basically animals. And to pretend we are not is going against millennia of evolutionary biology that we are animals and we need to live in rhythm with the earth and with nature. Sun exposure has countless benefits. We're talking vitamin D, but you're also talking all of the different types of radiation that you get from the sun. You know, you hear about saunas being good. You get many of those same waves that you get from a sauna from the sun. The sun balances your circadian rhythm. The sun supports your detoxification processes. The sun directly influences your mood. It balances things like serotonin and melatonin. I already mentioned grounding, the grounding cable that I use when I sleep in my previous point. But if we can add to this some daily grounding, walking on the beach, sitting in the park with your feet in the soil, a little bit of gardening, whatever it looks like for you. If we can get a little bit closer to nature, it has a profoundly healing effect. The fifth point is improving our mental health. This looks like a lot of different things for a lot of different people. This can be mind body practices like yoga, like Qigong. This can be things like meditation. This looks like working on addictive behaviors that we have, you know, whether this it looks like substance abuse or addictions to technology, you know, personally, I struggle a lot with a video game addiction and short form video content, you know, scrolling on reels or YouTube shorts and things like that. It just wires my brain in this really crazy way. And I have to be really mindful of this and I have to live consciously around this modern technology that we have. This also looks like self-development and pursuit of a, of a better version of ourselves. This means showing up for our families differently. This means showing up for our communities differently. This means showing up in the world differently and trying to make ourselves better people that can contribute more to society and turn the world into a world that we are more proud of. This is a really big part of healing. And I know that maybe it sounds like it's not your problem right now or it feels like it's too big to face and I totally get it, but I promise you, you'll get there. The sixth point is physical movement and challenge. Now this is gonna look different for everyone, as, as healing always does. But for me, this has looked like a consistent commitment to 10,000 steps per day. This is quite a realistic challenge for me. Thinking back to a couple of years ago when even 2,000 steps would have been absolutely unfathomable to be able to do that. But now my goal's set at, at 10,000 steps. I don't wanna keep pushing. It's also important to add some challenge. Walking is great, it's a really nice foundation, but we need some, some bigger goals. As I said earlier in the video, we are a part of nature and everything in nature is either growing or dying. So if physically you're not growing into greater challenges, you are dying. Now this will look different for everybody. This can look like improvements in flexibility. This can be improvements in physical strength. This could look like optimizing your, your BMI, your body composition. Different substances on your body have different effects. Greater muscle mass has beneficial effects for your hormones and for your metabolism. Having greater body fat 
can actually cause problems as fat works like a gland inside the body. It can affect our estrogen production. It can change other factors inside of our body. In fact, for men, one of the most testosterone destroying lifestyle factors is holding excess body weight because of the impacts it has on estrogen levels. So whatever that challenge looks like for you, be that fasting, be that walking 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 steps a day. Maybe it's to learn to do a handstand or to do a pull up. Those are both things that I would love to be able to do one day and I'm working towards. The seventh step. The seventh point is a connection to something bigger. Now this doesn't have to have a religious connotation if you don't want it to. If you are religious, then great. This is an easy point for you. You're already working on it. But this could look like developing yourself spiritually. This could look like a deeper connection to nature, maybe as mentioned in our previous point. Maybe this is just seeing yourself just as a little gut bacteria is to you, you are to the earth. Just as your gut flora directly impacts your health, you directly impact the health of the planet. And maybe the way that you connect to something bigger is just seeing yourself as a small piece of this very big global puzzle. Whatever it looks like to you, that doesn't matter. But what is important is that you see how you are important and how you are a little piece of a bigger whole and nurturing that and developing that. So these are my seven steps to make healing obvious. I'd be really interested to hear in a comment below, which one of these is your strength? Which one of these are you naturally good at? I'm personally a fantastic sleeper. I sleep amazingly. And let me know below as well. What's your weak point? Where do you struggle? I really struggle on the mental health stuff. Tell me what diet to eat, tell me what supplements to take and I will do it, no problem. Tell me to go and sit in a room and meditate for 30 minutes and I will have the biggest tantrum you could imagine. This is what's hard for me and this is where I need accountability to be consistent. And this brings me to my bonus point. Number eight, you didn't even know you were gonna get it, is community. The healing process can feel really challenging, especially if you live in a family or in an environment where you're not very well understood. I'm very fortunate that my father was really helpful. He really understood me and really tried to help me heal. And now I live with my wife and she also really gets it. She's orientated around health in the same way that I am. But I know that not everybody has that. I know that some people live with their parents and they don't get it. Or they have a circle of friends and they don't get it. And maybe their partner does not support them. They just don't get it. And being understood, being seen, and being able to talk and communicate with other people that are in a similar situation as you, that get it is so important for healing. And this is why I've decided to create a new private community, obviously healing. The principle behind the group is basically what I've outlined in the video today. I really wanna help you perfect the basics. I want you to take the essentials and get them right. There's so much noise on the internet about what you should do to heal. Should you do the carnivore diet? Should you take zinc carnosine? Should you take ashwagandha? Should you do a million different things? Have you tried rewiring your nervous system? Have you done this? Have you done that? There's so much noise and it's really hard to know what to do. And especially if you're having a bit of a flare up or you're feeling not so good, it can be really tricky because you get pulled in all these different directions and then you end up trying lots of different things out of desperation and it doesn't get you anywhere. So what this community is designed to do is to help you focus on the basics that are going to be the things that change your life. This is working on the seven core principles that I described to you today. And a couple more things like inflammation, like immune system function, like fasting and eating patterns, like stress, stress management, and accountability. Now, the way this community is gonna work is gonna be a little bit different from maybe anything you've ever seen. We're launching a front-facing course with a back-end community. What this means is all of these content pillars that I've just described to you today, I'm gonna to be creating YouTube videos for and publishing them on YouTube completely for free. So you're gonna have access to all of the information regardless of whether you join the community or not. I know what it's like trying to heal on a budget. I struggled for a really long time without very much support because I simply didn't have the money. And I truly believe that the information and the knowledge that you need to heal should be accessible regardless of whether you can afford it or not. And the back-end community is designed to take the people that want to invest in a little bit of accountability and to have a little bit more support to really help them dial these things in. So the way this group will work is we will have a WhatsApp chat. WhatsApp is just a, an app on your mobile. The reason we're using WhatsApp is it's, it's off platform. It's not on Facebook, it's not on Instagram. We can basically say whatever we want. There's no censorship. And the format of this group is that it is a 24 seven live coaching environment. I've tried group programs in the past where we have Zoom meetings and weekly sessions and it's always very difficult 
for people to attend because of work, because life gets in the way, and you often don't need support a regular interval. You need support in the moment when you're actually struggling. So the way this community works is you are able to ask your questions in the chat and get feedback from myself and from other members of the community whenever you need it. I also think it's really important to clarify that if you do have an extremely complex health situation, you should be mindful of what it is you're gonna get from this group. What we're focusing on here is the basics. We're really trying to get the basics right. So if you have a more complex situation and you're looking for some support, it might be better for you to book in a consultation with me or to contact another professional. What I wanna to bring to you with this group is community, is support, is accountability. I want you to feel like you not only have the information that you need, but that you have someone to walk you through how to implement that information in your life to give you the tangible changes that you're looking for. Whether you're a single mum with very little time, very, very busy, dealing with allergies and some gut problems, or a young man, entrepreneur like myself, just looking for a little bit more energy, a little bit of a better physique, and to feel a little bit more focused. Or if you're somewhere in between, if you have any interest in joining the community, please just scroll down, click the link below, and it'll take you to a page where you can sign up and join our community. And when you sign up, I'll see you in there and I'll look forward to your barrage of questions that I can help you with. Take it from me as someone that has worked for the last decade at healing chronic health problems. If you get the basics right, everything else will follow. I absolutely promise you, you can heal. You can do this. Whether you join the community or not, you're still going to do it. If you do want a little bit of extra support, if you want to just have a little version of me in your pocket so that you can ask me questions, I would love to be there for you. So that's everything for me today. I'll see you in the community. Take care. Goodbye.